welcome back to cybersecurity tv and welcome to the second episode of the series on how to bypass web application firewall uh, today we're going to discuss about uh, some of the encoding techniques such as character unique unicode uh, utf and then we'll also see some uh, like you know the reason behind why can we use or why are we learning these encoding techniques so we can bypass the web application firewall I want to start slow and, and make sure you have very basic understanding on all of these techniques before I can go on and like, you know, describe all the examples in the later, later videos. So uh, if we start with the character encoding, uh, now this seems very, uh, like, you know, obvious and, and sometimes you might ignore this if the finding is uh, flagged on the uh, burp uh, scanner. Uh, and I've seen this several times, like HTML uses unrecognized car set. When I see this, uh, you would really think like, you know, I think by default, uh, burp marks it as a as an informational finding. There is no risk uh, or the severity attached to it. So it's obvious that we would ignore this. But this is sometimes really helpful if you want to bypass, uh, like, you know, the filter or the server side validation or the firewall. Because if the application is not considering the care set, then you can use different kind of care set to bypass. And, and, and that's, that's the vulnerability, right? If the application doesn't recognize the character passed by the user or the attacker, uh, it, it leaves up to the browser who can, like, you know, who will change to the most common or matching character and then render into the browser. So this could affect input validation uh, or bypass the input validation by using certain characters or it can also uh, affect the output uh, uh, of the uh, web application because uh, you can also execute attacks such as cross-site scripting. So uh, this is why like, you know, the character uh, and cat set and character encoding is so much uh, important on, on how the application is using and what is application using. One of the other thing is ASCII, right? So uh, we have seen this so many times. Like if you, for example, have to transmit letter A, you can encode like you can do percentage four, like if you see this road number four and column one. So that's the ASCII character 41. And so if you want to denote A, you can try percentage 41 and, and that's how you can bypass. And in the, probably in the uh, few years ago when the applications and the libraries were not so much secure. You, I, I, like you know, I could, I could exploit the cross-site scripting by instead of using less than you would just use percentage three C, and then that's where how you can bypass. So uh, if if the application is you uh, like you know looking for non-ASCII value, and if you pass the ASCII value, or the WAF is looking for only non-ASCII characters, then yeah, that's how uh, you can you can bypass the uh, uh, firewall. Uh, the second uh, option, like the second uh, encoding is the UTF-8. UTF uh, this is the most common uh, in the today's application. Uh, like pretty much all the applications that I've seen would support the UTF-8. Uh, the only thing is this is a variable length code set. Of course, we don't need to go deep into like how it is computed and everything because that's not something we are looking for right now. Uh, but we'll cover in the later videos on on how you can use and what are the examples of the bypass uh, of the like how can you use it uh, unicode is a uh, similar kind of derived from the utf uh, it's a combination of 2 8 and utf 16 um, uh, how like uh, if you let's say like you know if the application is supporting the unicode and if you use the mapping or combination of between all of this uh, utf 2 8 or 16 and then that's might be a possibility that you can also uh, bypass the firewall um, the the reason like you know the, the most of the uh, most cases how the bypass really works is uh, suppose there is a there is a character uh, weird character which is not pretty much like you know part of the ASCII chart so when the user provides or the attacker provides that character application tries to match it with the most suitable not the exact but the most suitable character from the other uh, care set and if it finds something it's gonna attach that and 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 so your goal as an attacker what what you want to do is you do not want to supply directly less than character because of course it's gonna be blocked by filter or firewall but you want to supply something which is not application is not able to map because application is not supporting it and then the application itself will degrade it to some other characters which will hope that it's a less than or something character which is executable 
and then that will bypass the server side filter and then eventually execute in the browser uh, i think we have discussed this uh, previously in one of our session about the multiple encoding this is another way to bypass a filter or the firewall here what you're gonna do is let's say you have percentage u 003 c uh, which is of course for the less than and then you encode it again and that will become percentage UFE 64 right so that's that's how uh, uh, different uh, like multiple encoding works and sometimes uh, the the application of the filter is only looking for percentage U 003 C if it's only allow listing for example so that's again uh, a valid way to bypass it now other type of encoding that we have seen in the past is url encoding which is like over the protocol if you have to transfer something then uh, base64 encoding which is uh, data transfer between like you know multiple requests so those are the different kind of encoding so we'll, we'll see in the detail how do we uh, deal with the examples uh, another thing i have uh, interesting i have noticed as well is uh, usually waf are pretty much behind on the latest technologies or the version of the technologies that uh, the developers are using for example http2 was very recent couple of years ago where the waf rules were not able to match up to the speed or you don't have any rules to support that that kind of request or analyze and block such request same way now http3 is getting popular and I don't think so most of the waf is supporting the uh, http3 as well so sometimes by intention as an attacker if you pass http3 request and the waf will not be able to understand it because there is there are no rules or it's not uh, suitable to that then it will decrease the request to http2 and be, will allow your request uh, same thing tls 1.3 uh, 1.3 is recent uh, fairly recent i would say and not uh, like not uh, widely supported by all the WAF, so that's another request, another possibility. Like, uh, if it cannot support it, will downgrade the connection and then, like you know, um, will let it forward the request to the application. Uh, WAF socket is again, it's been there for a while now, but still, there are not enough rules in the WAF uh, with the because it's it's very hard to find a balance for the false positive. Uh, versus real request uh, because WebSocket is uh, not a con like uh, usual HTTP traffic, so that's why WAF is not able to manage the rules. So sometimes you can also bypass this filter using the WebSocket. I think we have covered uh, in one of our previous videos about the how, how to exploit the WebSocket connection and and everything. So these are some of the techniques uh, we, one can use and learn uh, to bypass of course uh, it all depends on the fingerprinting and the information gathering that initially you had before you start the pen test right and how much time you have so once you spend enough time and and learn about all of this and then you can uh, try to see uh, and you you pay attention to these tiny details like what what i've sh uh, shown you in the first slide that uh, the burps with uh, warning on the cat set html cat set not supported or not defined or etc right so once you pay attention to that then you can use those minor minor tips to build your payload to bypass this uh, techniques uh, I'll, I'll show you some some real world examples or some real examples on how you can use this uh, to bypass but of course OWASP has a uh, quite of much resources so for example if you look at the cross site scripting uh, in the cross site scripting cheat sheet you can see bunch of payloads which you can use to bypass different filters and might as well like for the firewall as well so likewise you have different cheat sheet and uh, just just create your own list and and use it with the intruder and, and practice as much as you can uh, with your ongoing and, and future assessment so uh, that's it uh, for today uh, in the next video we'll we'll talk about the uh, some more detailed and examples and, and some more practical things and uh, technical things so probably that will help and clear clear doubts on how can we use all of these things that we have learned in the in these two episodes uh, if you have any questions feel free to uh, drop it down of course uh, feel free to share uh, your knowledge as well with our community if you uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel or uh, hit the like button please do now and I'll see you guys next week Bye.